Sing with me where he leads, I'll follow an old gospel song. Sweet are the promises, kind is the word. Dear Father, any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless I see. He the great example is and pattern for me. Where he leads, I'll follow. attention to it uh, as you uh, listen and participate. I hope you're not just uh, listening there and zoning out on me. I hope you've got your Bible with you because it'll, it'll bless you. It's in the first chapter of the book of James and let's start reading with verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Hmm, sound familiar? Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, there's the answer right there, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Well, we sure don't want to be double-minded and unstable, do we? We want to be among those that others can look at and say, hmm, not sure what you've got, but I need some of that. And so the business of following God through awkward, difficult times, I recommend it highly to you. This uh, passage here in James uh, give us a little bit different look at things. Remember Matthew 7, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. It's almost an escalation of aggression in our prayer life. And frankly, sometimes we get to the point of um, saying, you know, and I, I'm sure it doesn't make him nervous at all, but we say things like, God, where are you? And, and God, why? And... Um, I, I just know that if, if there is an answer, it's found in his book. And so uh, don't be embarrassed or ashamed to go ahead and let your, let your enthusiasm and your prayer life escalate. But this passage here in James, it, it comes across this way to me. Ask, and, and uh, maybe, maybe we have not because we ask not. There's another scripture that talks about that. So we need to go to God and say, God, I need to know what to do. That's what wisdom is about. It's not yet another uh, collection of facts. We have plenty of that. Just Google. You know, you can, you can find out about anything uh, on the Internet. But, but the, the trick isn't just to find out something, but rather what do you do with that knowledge? What do you do with the information that you have? And so when you ask God, then you should expect or anticipate that he's going to give it to you. In other words, he will, he will what? Some particular piece of information that perhaps you already possess, you certainly know where to find it, but he makes it personal and real and, and exact. 
for that moment for you. And it dawns on, upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. That's how we know things. Uh, the, the gifts of the Spirit at work in our lives. And so we ask God, and in the course of time as we read the Bible, as uh, a Christian brother or sister gives advice, or we hear someone on television, perhaps, or on the internet, uh, preaching and giving the Word of God, and it dawns on us, that's for me, that is speaking directly into my need. And so when, when we ask, we need to expect and anticipate that God will, in fact, get something through to us that is going to be meaningful to the moment. And then we need to function as though He actually has given that to us. It's like um, the pilot, uh, the airline pilot, who just simply has a, a, a plethora of information, huge dashboard in front of him, control panel in front of him, uh, all kinds of gauges and dials and sensors picking up everything from his airspeed to outside temperature to whatever, all kinds of stuff. And if, if he gets skeptical and doesn't function in regard to what he's seeing on his instruments, it can cost him his life and the hundreds of people behind him that are trusting that he will glean the information and function on the basis of that information as it is trustworthy. And so it is with us when we ask, and we anticipate God's going to speak to us, and we find something apropos to the moment, or we hear something, or God speaks something into our spirit that really is to that particular need, then we need to function as though God has answered. There in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gift of the word of wisdom is paired with the gift of the word of knowledge. Knowledge being facts that perhaps you're not real sure how you came by those facts, but you have them. The gift of the word of wisdom is rather, what do I do with that? And the Holy Spirit, sir, the Holy Spirit in your life as a believer, the Holy Spirit is in charge of helping you to know exactly what you should do with the information that God has given to you. Some of it is so intensely personal you would never share it with anyone else. It's just God speaking to you. Some of it is to bless the body of Christ in session when and if we get to be back in session as the body of Christ. And some of it is to be written down and trumpeted from the rooftops. But let God speak in your spirit and then function as though he has in fact heard your cry. Father, make these things real to us and help us to function like that pilot who has learned to trust his instruments and knows that if he'll just keep on keeping on, things are going to be well. We give you praise for these things in Jesus' name. And I speak to you, my dear friend, in Jesus' name.